representation of Tongan. So we're saying from this point of view, how many Buddhist vehicles are there? How many? Somebody says two. What are they? The lesser vehicle and the greater vehicle. And whatever we're translating is lesser, lower, low, of course, the people who propound such tenets and practice such paths usually don't call themselves low, right? It's pejorative term used by those who call themselves great. Okay? Um, vehicles. Uh, further divisions? Great. Hmm? The greater vehicles divide between uh, sutra and tantra. Mm -hmm. So sutra grade vehicle and tantra grade vehicle. Okay, or perfection vehicle and mantra. Mantra. <clears throat> what about lesser vehicle? Solitary realizers and Oh, no, Shavaka, Prayeka, Buddhas. Solitary realizers. And hearers. <clears throat> and hearers. And auditors. <laughs> oh, these guys are back here. <laughs> and hearers. So hearer, we'll say, since we're talking about hearing. Okay? Sure. So if you say that there are two vehicles, it's obvious which of the two you choose. If you say if the terminology three vehicles is used, uh, which uh, three are the standard the ones? Here. I mean, terminology is used in standard ways. Here, solitary vehicle, solitary realizer, and then the bodhisattva. Right. Or great vehicle. Okay. Or great vehicle, right? Now, what is the Sanskrit word for vehicle? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yana. Yeah. Yeah. This, this guy's got some twisted sense of humor. Uh, yana. Uh, and it's built from what verbal root? Yana. Yeah. Yana. Yeah. 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 To go. And what is the na? Means. Means of going. Means of going, therefore. Right? When you put it together? And what are the two ways of looking at the meaning of means of going? A vehicle. Place. That's the goal. Yes. So yana is both the goal, it's very unusual to call the means of going the goal. And otherwise, it's the path. Path? Oh, you've got to be careful. Well, anyway, transport the, system. anyway, the means to get to the goal. Please hold back your means to go. We'll just do it. Well, we don't even want to do that. In what sense is the goal a means to go? If yana means means of going, in what sense is the goal of great vehicle practice or of less vehicle practice a means of going? <coughs> Follow me? Mm -hmm. The etymology doesn't have to hold, but it does hold. Well, is it depending on the goal, you would take up certain means? So in other words, if the goal is Buddhahood, you're going to take up means to reach... No, is that what you're that's doing? not how it's explained. Because the goal of Buddhahood bears all sentient beings. Yes, bears. The goal of Buddhahood bears all sentient beings' welfare. It can carry along all sentient beings' welfare. This is unusual, right, to, to look at means of going this way. But you can see the sense of it, or at least you can see how the sense is forced into it. And the goal, what's the goal of the lesser vehicle? Photo destroyer. Photo destroyer. Which is 
In Sanskrit, the word is? Which is arhan, or arhat, or arhant. Now, the term foe destroyer comes from ari, hun. Hun to kill, ari, enemy. And in order to get this meaning, you, there has to be an I infix. And my sensory teacher at the University of Wisconsin used to laugh uproariously at this Buddhist etymology of arhan as arihan. So I asked, and she said, wow, you have to have an I infix. And so I asked, well, is it unusual to have an I infix? And she said, no. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> The other meaning is one worthy of worship. And I'm forgetting here, which is ar, and the ant means uh, in Tibetan, it is chur. Er er is worthy, er, a chur is worship. And that's why you get worthy one. Worthy one is how it's often translated. That's now in Tibet it came in both ways, both as chur and as dajumba. And you can see Ari Han from the Tibetan. So the translators into Tibetan chose the uh, etymology as Ari Han to be predominant, even though they knew both etymologies, OK? Conscious choice. And then, of course, you end up using photo destroyer in places where it, it would have been more uh, easy to understand what was going on in the Sanskrit text if they chose worthy one, worthy of worship. But once they would seal in on a term, they, they'd often just do it the same way. Yes? Um, in your, your Tsongkhapa, in your text, when you're using the lesser vehicle, are you referring to all of the lesser vehicles? Because no. sometimes you specifically mention Theravada, and I was wondering how, who is that distinction? Okay. So, we've got it, I'll get to that. Okay. <clears throat> how many schools of tenants are there? Four. Four. What are they? Starting from the bottom. Great exposition. Great exposition. Sutra. Sutra school. Chitta Mind only. Mind only. And? And? Uh, mm -hmm. Middle way. Middle way. Middle way. Middle way. <laughs> And what are the two divisions? These are divided into two groups. I mean, which two fall into which two? Yeah. The mind and the Pajamaka fall into Maya. Great vehicle. And Sutra and Great Exposition fall into? Is this great vehicle and this great vehicle the same? No. Why? It's a basic question, very basic question. Yes. Because um, to be a follower of the great vehicle, um, you have to have the altruistic motivation. But you can still hold on to tenets of the great uh, exposition of sutras. Yes, yes. So this is division. This division is by way of philosophical tenet. Whereas this is, this is a, primarily a division by way of motivation. Mm. Now, does the Great Exposition School teach about, teach about the hero vehicle? That means to say how, you, how a hero would practice. Easy question. Answer. Yes. Yes. About how solitary realizers practice. Yes. yes. What about how bodhisattvas uh, practice? 
the uh, let's uh, let's let, I'll just I won't point how bodhisattvas practice. Yes. Tell me. Yes. Yes. Anyone want to say no? Are you saying that Hinayana schools? Yes, and Hinayana schools yes. teach about how bodhisattvas practice? Yes and, yes. Yes and no? Why yes. no? Um, yes, well, first I'll say yes, because it's represented <laughs> in the, the stories of the Buddha. That yes. The Buddha was a bodhisattva. Like, yes! They, <laughs> <laughs> but yet they don't um, prescribe this as being the only thing that people should strive for. Well, the, the others don't say it's the only, only one one should strive for either. So the answer is yes. Okay? You see, they tell the story of how Shakyamuni Buddha uh, practiced the Bodhisattva path. Therefore, they set out a Bodhisattva path. Even the Hinayana schools set out a Bodhisattva path. And they call Shakyamuni a Bodhisattva. He was the great Bodhisattva of this era. And forget about it, the rest of you can't swing it. You know, the best you can do is Arhat. But there will be somebody, you know, there'll be people who do take on the Bodhisattva path now. And way in the future, we'll become a Buddha of an era. But, you know, forget about it. It's not going to be you. It, you know, I mean, that's the tenor of the system. So they do teach a Bodhisattva path. So that means the Great Exposition School and the Sutra School. Now, the Great Exposition School, these are very rough presentations, but it says that there are 18 sub-schools. Okay? A sutra school, some people say, is one of those 18. Other people say it isn't. I don't want to get into the details here. But within the sutra school, there are those following scripture, and they follow Vasubandhu. And those following logic, and they follow Dignaga Dhammakiri. Now, Vasubandhu wrote a text, and the root text lays out, it's very, very rough, the position of the Great Exposition School, very rough, OK? But his own commentary uh, hacks away at a lot of those assertions, and that becomes the Sutra School following scripture, OK? His own commentary. He uses unsuitable endings and so forth to indicate that he really doesn't believe such, such tenets. And then in his commentary, he makes it clear. Now, what about the mind-only school? They're divided into two types. Those following scripture who follow Asanga. And those following logic who follow, again follow Dignagra and Dhammakirti. Positive, no external world. Do they set forth a path for lesser vehicle practitioners, hearers and solitary realizers? Do they? Do they tell you what hearers and solitary realizers practice? Yes. Do they tell you how bodhisattvas practice? Yes. So the same with the Middle Way, right? Middle Way School, which is divided in Tibet into an autonomy school and a consequence school. I say in Tibet because even though there were debates among these people in India, they didn't say, we're in this school, the others are in that school. These names were made up into Tibet and were retroactively applied to India. Sometimes European-American scholars pick it up and, as, if, as if these were in India. Now, what, from what, so these people also set forth how lesser vehicle practitioners uh, practice and how great vehicle practitioners practice. Now, 
<clears throat> Songaba, where do you place him? What is his own allegiance? Consequence school. Who's the big wig for the autonomy school? The, 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 yeah, the big wig is Pavel uh, Vega. <laughs> Founder, really, and uh, others. Shantarakshita. Shantarakshita and his student Kamala Shila founded, so to speak, another subdivision within the autonomy school. Shantarakshita came to Tibet and was so important in Tibet in the 8th century. So it's interesting that the consequence school won out, won the allegiance. And does the autonomy school talk about Nagarjuna? Or yes, they both, absolutely. They both because the middle way school stems from Nagarjuna, my only school stems from uh, Asanga Dharmakiri, but mainly Asanga. So now, Tsongkhapa, when he lays out what's going on amongst the vehicles, from which point of view is he talking? You know, you got to keep straight. When he says that all of these folks have to realize the most subtle emptiness, from what point of view is he speaking? Consequence middle way. Yeah, the middle way consequence school. When he says that in order to get out of cyclic existence, it's necessary to realize the most subtle emptiness, he's speaking from the point of view of the middle way consequence school and only this school. None of the others holds this view. So when the term, because, so then from what point of view are the middle way school, the mind only school called great vehicle? If these practitioners are called great vehicle because, um, God, am I going to easily dig myself a hole here, right? Uh, because of seeking uh, highest enlightenment primarily for the sake of other beings, OK? Then from what point of view are these two schools called great vehicle? From which perspective? From which perspective? <laughs> you tell me. Well, from their own perspective, um, aren't they understanding the subtle emptiness of phenomena versus the lower schools do not understand the subtle emptiness of phenomena? Okay. So they present a selflessness of phenomena rather than just a selflessness of persons. Through the realization of, that's not sufficient. Uh, they present a substance of phenomena and not just substance of persons. And they present a path for overcoming the obstructions to omniscience. Now, let me ask you, don't the Great Exposition School and the Sutra School set forth a path for becoming omniscient. Omniscient. So you yourself already said that they set forth a, in describing how Shakyamuni Buddha became enlightened. They set forth a path for achieving great enlightenment. In that great enlightenment, is there omniscience or not? Is it the same omniscience as in the Great Vehicle School of Tenets, schools of tenets? No. Not a no. Yeah. What's the difference? Um, I think the um, obstructions, they, they divided the obstructions to uh, of afflictive emotions from obstructions to omissions. And I'm not sure if the 
The low vehicle doesn't. But the low vehicle does have things like uh, something like defilements that prevent all knowingness, which Shakyamuni Buddha overcame. And these other arhats have not. So then the question becomes, just what kind of all knowingness is this? And how is it different from the from the great vehicle all knowingness? Omnipotence, whatever. Uh, mainly the difference is in the low vehicle uh, uh, all-knowingness or omniscience, whatever you want to call it, is serial. A Buddha can know anything that that Buddha turns uh, his or her mind to. It's serial. There's no obstruction to knowing anything. If you want to know something, you just turn your mind to it and you know it. Whereas in the great vehicle, everything is known simultaneously. So all phenomena, which is phenomena themselves and their emptiness, whatever that in, however that emptiness be described in the various uh, great vehicle schools, not necessarily emptiness in the emptiness, are known simultaneously and directly. So all phenomena of the past, present, and future are known simultaneously. Now, there was one you know, in time, especially in Tibet, but also in India, you know, they broke up these schools into low vehicle and great vehicle. But indeed, let me just point out that one of the 18 schools was called um, the One Convention School. And their one convention was, uh, had to do with simultaneous cognition of all phenomena. Uh, so I mean, there were historical precedents, obviously, that led to the to the great vehicle schools of tenants. You get the point, though. Serial cognition and direct cognition. Yes. Um, one thing that confused me in, in your text and then attention to that is the viewpoint of the prasangika system, because in, in some parts it says that according to the prasangikas both the Hinayanas and the Mahayanas equally cognize the subtle emptiness of both persons and phenomena. Right. Both but, of these. Mm -hmm. Right. But then you also say, um, or here in this case it's the Dalai Lama saying, from the viewpoint of Prasangika Madhyamaka system, the selflessness of persons that is set forth by the lower schools is thus only of course selflessness. Yes. Right? So there seems to be a, I couldn't figure out the contradiction. Yes. Mm, what couldn't you figure out? Why it's coarse? Well, it sounds like on one, the first page, you're saying that they both cognize subtle emptiness of both persons. No, no, no. Phenomena. Both of these great vehicle and lesser vehicle practitioners, according to the middle way consequence school, right. cognize the most subtle emptiness of both persons and other phenomena. Okay. Now, when these folks, the middle way consequence school, looks at these, these schools' view of selflessness, these schools, not them. These schools' presentations of them, their presentations of them, remember, each one of these presents as a presentation of both of these. They say, you haven't even gotten emptiness right. You haven't even got the selflessness of persons right. Never mind the selflessness of phenomena. What you're calling the subtle selflessness of persons is really a coarse selflessness of persons. But yet yeah, you still understand it. You understand the coarse selflessness of persons. You couldn't even get out of cyclic existence. But by it's a sort of disgusting uh, <laughs> <laughs> parochialism that <laughs> from the point of view of the consequence school, even those in the autonomy school on down couldn't even get out of cyclic existence. Never mind attain Buddhahood. Why? Because they have misdescribed even the, self, the subtle selflessness of persons. I guess I don't see how this, these two differ because you're saying from this perspective they do. Now, when, remember we said the middle way consequence school has one way, or, or the consequence school, yeah, middle way consequence school has one way of telling you how these people practice. The Great Exposition School has another way of telling you how these people practice. So now you want to know how these two differ. Is that right? Um, 
<laughs> it's dealing, like that. No, but I'm still dealing with the two, the two consequence schools. I mean, in one hand, you're saying that the consequence schools acknowledges the selflessness of subtle selflessness of persons and phenomena yes. all um, Mahayanas and Hinayanists. Yeah. Because in, in order to get out of cyclic existence, you have to have realized that. So if you have attained, if you are a, 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 low, a lesser vehicle photo destroyer, even though by tenant it's not explained in the, as the subtle selflessness, you have to have realized the subtle selflessness in order to become a photo destroyer. Is that? Don't. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is if you really haven't understood, don't, don't say you're no, no, um, I have understood it by tenant. Okay. By tenant, they can. <laughs> so, but according to this, yeah, by tenant they do not understand the subtle selflessness of persons. Do you want the pages? Oh yes. Um, whoever is a, I think one thing Susan is saying, whoever is a real photo destroyer, is a prasangu. According to the Prasangikas, whoever is a real photo story of Prasangika, there's no others. There's no others. In one way, it's extremely Catholic. It includes everybody. You know, you're all under the great Republican tent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whoever's a real photo story, and they point to, now we're getting back to you, I think, was it yours or yours? Original question about Theravada. Was it yours? That if you're, and they, they, Narajuna himself, used Theravada scriptures, their scriptures, to say, in your scriptures itself is set forth the most subtle emptiness. But you guys haven't noticed. You see, these schools haven't noticed. It's in your scriptures. But as far as the schools go, you haven't noticed. And what was the sign? What was their sign that he could point to that they haven't noticed oh, this? Of that. Yeah, I remember the example. Are you going to answer that question? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the sign? <laughs> you said something about um, that the em that the person is yes. empty of of, wh of whatever. Right. But. But. They used person. I mean, it, that, that was it. The person is empty of whatever, substantial existence, inherent, whatever you want to call it. But the aggregates are not. Right. Mm -hmm. That indicates a different status for the person and other phenomena, which from Nagarjuna's point of view means they have not understood the subtle selflessness of the person. Because the dictum is, if you understand the subtle selflessness with respect to anything, when you turn your mind to that other, any other object, you will understand it. As long as you're within the functioning of that former consciousness, you know, you haven't gone to sleep or getting, gotten drunk or been distracted. That's what it means, within the functioning of the former consciousness. And it's really a telling point. This, this, it's like, no matter how Catholic I may want to be and boil everybody down to saying the same thing, you know, when you look at that assertion, that the person has one status and the arrogates have another status. Uh, you can't help but say, well, Nargarjuna is saying something different, or at least some of his take on it. But yet the scriptures still talk about a settlement. But the scriptures themselves, the that the, that, uh, the so-called Indiana scriptures themselves speak about such a subtle entity. So that's how Nagarjuna and so forth can say whoever is a, a true arhat is a consequentialist. And so they're, they're willing to accept that all these great persons were arhats. But then in their, you know, in their bigoted, seemingly bigoted, but you have to look at it that way to understand how radical it is. They, from, their, from this other point of view, all of these people who set forth these other schools are not setting forth even the subtle selflessness of persons. They're setting, setting forth uh, types of selflessness that would be helpful to get to a more subtle selflessness. 
but not the most subtle one. Now, whether those people understood something deeper or not, who can say? Now, yes. When you were mentioning, I mean, like, were you including mind only in this? Yes. Even in the autonomous school. They don't even have a means for getting out of cyclic existence. Isn't it pathetic? <laughs> <laughs> now, isn't there in Tantra in Tibet a little chart in the rear that sets forth this thing about schools? Uh, Is there such a thing? Yes. 174. Yeah, if you say that photostroy means real photostroy, right. they're setting forth a path that they claim will yield the fruit of photostroy. That's the real fruit. The real one, yeah. according to Songobas, could only uh, be with the consequence school. You know, in a hierarchical system, you know, you sort of get fed up with it after a while, don't you? Whether, you know? <laughs> That's another ant to get. But from another point of view, they've raised this very interesting topic of could the person have one status and other phenomena have another? I mean, it's just a very interesting point. And then how they might use it to dump on people is, is, a, is another matter. Now, So if you want to look into the difference between lesser vehicle and great vehicle, usually you don't talk about the difference between the hero vehicle and the solitaire realizer vehicle. There's some discussion of it. Uh, obviously, solitaire realizers, uh, actually, I have a, it's like personality type. They, they tend to be loners. And at least in the, in the last lifetime when they achieve the level of photo destroyer, they want to be alone. And they don't want to talk with people. And if they do teach people, they do it through signs. <laughs> if you go to India, you know, you see this is wholly within the scope of <laughs> what's going on in India. <laughs> Until I went to India, I thought, oh, this is going too far. <laughs> um, I've got, I've got a nice little, uh, I should have thrown that in there. Anyway, I didn't. Anyway, maybe I'll bring it in next time and, and uh, read off some of the personality traits that go with here as a advisors. So you want to decide what the difference is between lesser vehicle and great vehicle. Where do you have to look? Excuse me? Now, yeah, but don't jump too fast. Go slower. Go a step back. You have to look at the two meanings of vehicle. It has to be within one of the two. One of the two meanings, one or, one or, or both of the meanings of vehicle. As the goal to which it progresses and as the means by which one gets to that goal, right? It is a very methodical analysis. Now, is the goal of the, of, are the goals of lesser vehicle practitioners and of great vehicle practitioners <coughs> different? Yes or no? Yes. 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 What's the goal of lesser vehicle practitioner? Oh, and of the uh, great vehicle practitioner? Good. Are they different? Yes, they're very different. According to the school, the latter has overcome the obstructions to omniscience. Right? 
vastly different. So the two vehicles differ in terms of the goal. And therefore, they must differ with respect to the means of going. Now, if you're going to look at the means of going, how do you look at it? You look at salient features of the means of going. What are the salient features of the means of going? Altruistic intentions. But wisdom and method. What are the great wisdom and method? Method. You see, as Chandrakirti says, these are the two wings of the bird flying to enlighten. Now, wisdom is a technique or a method for overcoming obstructions, right? This method, however, does not mean that. This method means motivation. Now, because the middle way consequence school holds that the wisdom that both vehicles have is the same, this direct realization of the most subtle emptiness of both persons and other phenomena, it's really method or motivation that, that directs where you're going to end up. And thus, it gets to be called method. That, that's one, one explanation of what the term method means. It's odd that, you know, if you just called it motivation, it'd be a hell of a lot easier. Because, I mean, after all, wisdom is a method, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what language you look at it, upaya, top, method. Okay, the difference has to be in one or the other or both between Hinayana and Mahayana. Is it in wisdom, according to the Middle Way Consequence School? No. no. Therefore, method. method. And then what's the difference between method in Hinayana and method in Mahayana? Compassion. Well, is there no compassion well, in Hinayana? Hinayana? Altruist and to become in life. So then, on this question of compassion, just what is the difference between Hinayana and Mahayana, if there is compassion in Hinayana? What it leads towards. What it leads towards? You mean they have both the same compassion? Both have great compassion? No, that you're attempting to achieve Buddhahood as a means to enact. But you're saying both have great compassion. Both Hinayana practitioners and Mahayana practitioners have great compassion. The word great is throwing me off. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> Deliberately thrown in there. Thrown to throw. I would say that they both have compassion, but I don't know what the word great is. Yes, this, there are uh, debates among Gelugpa scholars. Some say, uh, Jayan Sheva, for instance, says, both Hinayana practitioners and Mahayana practitioners have great compassion. Mahayana practitioners have special great compassion. <laughs> <laughs> Other authors of textbooks say this difference between compassion and great compassion. The difference lies in the willingness to take upon to oneself the burden, you know, thinking, I will free everyone from suffering the cause of suffering. That's the step that's different. Did you describe that as where it is placed on the Mahayana? It's placed, compassion is first, whereas in the Hinayana schools, it comes up after. It's one of the results of following along the path. In other words, I want to get out of cyclical existence, and in doing so, I do get this compassion, and I help other beings, whereas in Mahayana, it starts with compassion. I thought you said mentioned that. I don't think so, but it is important in the yeah, beginning, exactly. middle, and end, right? <laughs> so, it makes it hmm? It makes it a prerequisite. Hmm. Which is what he's saying. Yeah. Even if I didn't say it. Right. I'll look for it. Yes. Also, could you say that in the great vehicle, once you get to Buddha, so you really have it finished, but you're starting because you need, when you need to fulfill the promise of helping all other beings. Say it again. That in the great vehicle, a practitioner of the great vehicle, um, getting enlightened is not really the end, but it's the beginning of being able to fulfill the promise to help all other beings to be enlightened too. Yeah. 
So it's in a way that, that makes it a bit different. Yeah, this comes to the altruist intention to become enlightened. And I was just backtracking. Uh, the, that the primary motivation is the altruistic intention to become enlightened is different. It's not, however, that so-called Hinayana practitioners aren't compassionate. In fact, that when I was going to India for the first time in 1971, I guess it was, it's a German psychic who <laughs> said that the Theravada practitioners were much more compassionate than the Tibetans. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, it was secondary versus primary. So. You said for a low vehicle practitioner, compassion is secondary feature of the path, not the primary motivation. So I'm sorry. Oh, oh well, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, I accept your point. So what's the main, I'm still kind of confused about what the difference is. Just this will help me clarify it. Like, what's the difference between a foe destroyer and someone who is a Buddha? A Buddha has overcome the obstructions to omniscience, and a foe destroyer has just overcome the obstructions preventing liberation from cyclic existence. Okay. So, no longer has the ignorance that will assent to this false appearance of phenomena as if they inherently exist, and therefore won't have any of the afflictive emotions. But there's a whole lot of past karma, a energy, that's tied up by way of the karmas deposited by past ignorant deeds that prevents realization of everything. And a bodhisattva is primarily seeking to help others, and thus primarily wants to, uh, why does a bodhisattva want omniscience? Better. How can you, how, why would you help others better? That you can see back and forward and prescribe a certain path for them knowing where they where they're Yeah, going. it's put out in two groups and you've said both of them. You know other people's predispositions backwards and forwards, so to speak. And you know all possible techniques. It's not that you want to know the kind of bugs in the world, or, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but so you want to know these two things, and and of course how to put them together. So the difference in method is that bodhisattvas, the bodhisattva type. Well, one way Jayan Sheva puts it is also is that bodhisattvas, when they cultivate compassion are more enthusiastic about considering the various types of sentient beings. Individually considering this being, that being, this type, that type. And then going on and uh, being willing to emphasize, I will freedom from suffering the cause of suffering. Yes. Um, there's also well, that's just a difference in degree. Yes. Um, there's also this conception. It seems like for the great vehicle, you want to become a Buddha as quickly as possible because then you can help people. Mm. But then you also have places, I guess, in the Lotus Sutra and things like that, where they talk about that you refrain from entering enlightenment so that you can stick around more. And yes, there are. There's said to be three different ways three different styles of being altruistic. One is that of the shepherd, who comes in after the flock. You know, oh, I want to get everybody to enlightenment first, and then I'll go. And then there's the royal version, which is, I'll get there first. I'll be president first, and then I'll help everybody. And the other is that of a boatman. And you paddle, and all of you get there together. But it said the only realistic one is the royal one. Realistic meaning the one that's actually done it. So when it says in the Lotus Sutra that some people postpone enlightenment, no one postpones enlightenment. This is how that's explained away. No one ever postpones enlightenment. Why? Who would postpone being omniscient if you want to help others? It's not as if Buddhahood is a disappearing act. You know, that's the way it looks in the Lotus Sutra. Is that Buddha is a disappearing act, and you've got to keep from getting to that state 
so you keep being reborn in, in circulating existence. It's a, that's an attitude, not what's actually done. You sort of wonder, I mean, that neatly explains that whole thing away. <laughs> yeah, it also neatly explains a large corpus of the Mahayana Sutras. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, it explains uh, them So, do, does Tsongkhapa wish to uh, um, sever from the Prasangika view uh, a large corpus of Mahayana Sutra material? Not at all. You merely interpret it so that it fits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, then, so now we have described the difference between the lesser vehicle and the great vehicle sutra version. And, and I've tried to convey a sense of the similarity between these two vehicles, one in terms of wisdom. Well, what is the difference between the wisdom? There is some difference between the wisdom of the Sutra perfection, great vehicle, and the lesser vehicle. What's the difference? The sutra perfection, yes, kind of barge in, yes, has um, come about its understanding from more directions. Yes, using a myriad of reasons, whereas lesser vehicle practitioners tend to use only a few. One, two, three. What's very interesting is in Tibet, although they talk about this, they tend to only use one or two reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting, you know, you look at this, ah, we're a great vehicle and all this, and you look at how they actually do it, it's like... <laughs> well, it's more better, more reasons better. Well, you see, great vehicle people are supposed to be really smart <laughs> and uh, really sharp. And if you, yes, if you use more reasoning, the mind, it says, becomes more open to emptiness. Becomes more open to it. So Nagarjuna has a text of 27 chapters. Within each chapter, there are multiple forms. For instance, in the second chapter, there have got to be at least five different sets of reasonings. At least five. T.R.V. Morty says that Nagarjuna goes on ad nauseum. <laughs> so you see, it's like his mind began breaking up and falling apart. I, you know, I just can't stand this anymore. Whereas supposedly, the Bodhisattva type enthusiastically, oh, wow, another reasoning. You know? <laughs> and and it, it unlocks something in the Bodhisattva's mind. Whereas the duller type of person has to stick with one thing. Now, you've done that, where you've, where you've tried to do some other thing, and it fractures you such that you can't even do the first thing. So why does Zonkaba only make this, this distinction between uh, Tantra and Sutra? Not Tantra. Uh, I mean, uh, the deity yoga, why is he reducing to deity yoga then? In, I'm sorry, I jumped a little bit. Off. You did jump. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Talk about being Maybe. fractured. <laughs> <laughs> Cleavage went. <laughs> we, could, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll jump to it we'll, soon. We're getting there soon. Can I ask a question before we get out? The other thing is that in books on the Madhyamaka view, and in the consequence school in Gilupa, how they describe the selfness of persons begins looking like the way these people describe it. <clears throat> this non-consequentialist version that won't even get you out of cyclic existence. They do it in a very rough way. Yes? I had a question about um, still referring to the difference between the lesser vehicle and the great vehicle. Um, how do you distinguish between the obstructions to liberation and the obstructions to omniscience? What's the relationship of emptiness to that? Now, the obstructions to liberation are comprised by the ignorance that conceives or that assents to the appearance of persons and other phenomena as existing in their own right. Persons and other phenomena. So the conception of a self of persons, conception of self of phenomena, are both obstructions to uh, liberation. 
So what are the obstructions to omniscience? It's that appearance of inherent existence <coughs> itself, that there's a blackboard that covers from here to here. This appearance of inherent existence itself is the main obstruction to omniscience. As one of my teachers said, he was sitting on his bed, and he said, it's like this. When, you, when your mind sees this, it can't see what's behind it. There's a way that this appears that prevents what's seeing everything behind it. So the way things appear to us is, you know, if you talk about it in a gross way, they're overly solid, such that seeing one thing blocks seeing the complexity of what's there and, you know, and of what's four million miles away also, or one foot away, or four inches away, or a centimeter away. Now that false appearance, it, it's described as like a magician who has, we talked about this earlier in the semester, right? The, did we? No. A magician who has cast a, a spell Right, didn't we? Yes. Yes, it's where you didn't laugh, as I remember. <laughs> I told you the mantra and no one laughed at all. <laughs> TV, 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 right? Take something like this, and apparently some sort of salve is put on it that they talk about sticks, pebbles, and, and uh, twigs. Some sort of salve is put on it. And then the mantra is cast, TV, 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 and affects everybody's eye consciousness. And we see, usually they say horses and elephants, because people want beasts of burden, you know? I would say food, or Chernikirti says a banquet at some point, or a beautiful partner for sex. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, as you as the audience who don't know that this has been done to you, just think it exists there. I, as the magician, still see it, but don't believe in it. That's like the Arha, photo story. You've overcome the ignorance, but it still appears in its false aspect. A Buddha is like somebody who came in late, <laughs> who didn't get any mantra at all, and just sees a piece of paper, and so doesn't enter into thought about it you know, going home with the person. So that's, the obstructions to omniscience are the false appearance of phenomena. But then why would there be still some type of difference between these two vehicles in terms of the wisdom side of things? What, because these people use a myriad, myriad reasons? Both are realizing both practitioners of lesser vehicle and of the perfection vehicle are realizing the most subtle emptiness. Both. So it's not the level of emptiness that overcomes oh, the appearance of inherent existence itself. Then what, what is it? Yes. So it's the wisdom consciousness itself that overcomes both of the obstructions? Very interesting question. So she's saying, in the perfection vehicle, eventually, at the beginning of the eighth bodhisattva ground, right? Mm -hmm. You begin overcoming the obstructions to omniscience. So why don't you say that that wisdom consciousness is different then? Well, it has been enhanced by method. That's its difference. That's where it gets its difference. But it's a good point. It is different at that point due to the enhancement by a compassionate method. When I look around, I feel somehow lost. Are you lost? Just stop me. Because we can unravel if, you're, if there are steps that are being missed. Well, just stop me. I just want to make sure I yes. have it straight and maybe that. Um, so at the eighth bodhisattva ground, that's actually where you're starting to get the difference because method and wisdom become, there's a union, and that's when the obstructions to omniscience um, are overcome. Or well, you've, been, pra yeah, you've overcome. been practicing method all along, and uh, once you have overcome the obstructions to liberation, 
that f the force of the wisdom consciousness is enhanced, yes, so it can overcome the obstructions to omniscience. Why, I don't know. You know how it works is a fascinating thing to think about. Why does compassion, why does love, why do these altruistic deeds make the wisdom consciousness power more powerful? And if they do, why have they not been doing so all along, making it more powerful to overcome the innate Well, I think, it, I think it probably has. If you think about if it's due to our own karmas that these things appear in wrong aspect, it's due to a bifurcatory, to bifurcatory types of thoughts, hatreds, anger, even bright desire, desiring this thing that is over there. Whereas love, compassion, altruism are are not bi bifurcatory, at least in that sense. There may be an object of compassion and so forth, but it is, it's certainly not the off-putting of hatred, enmity, jealousy, that whole the hatred side of things. In terms of the lust side of things, I don't know. Is it all, could it also be because you, it has to be removed? I mean, if you have I mean, if you really want to demonstrate compassion, you have to get away from the obstructions to omniscience. So, it's true enough, but it has to be. But it is apparently compassion and compassion deeds themselves that empower the wisdom consciousness. And that's all it said. And deity yoga enhances this. So we've got the wisdom being pretty much the same in the two vehicles. And method, the compassion is not as different as, as great vehicle, as sometimes you get a sense of, oh, Hinayana son compassionate, uh, sort of put down of, uh, the so-called low vehicle practitioners. But there is a level of compassion altruism that is different. And that's what distinguishes these two vehicles in terms of the means by which one progresses, that to which one progresses thus is also different. Then, what's the difference between the two great vehicles? Yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> what do you look at? What are the features that you look at? Do it step by step. The method first? Don't jump to that. Oh. Yana. Yana. <laughs> the, <laughs> and what are the two types of yana? Goal and means. OK, what about the goal? Now, Tsongva says there's no difference in goal. There are persons who, in Tibet, who say that, there, that the Buddhahood described in Sutra is not the Vajradhara hood described in Tantra. And again, you're getting a hierarchical, you know, it's again, this Buddhahood Sutra. <laughs> Let's get something higher. We have Arha. <laughs> and then we replace that with Buddha. And <laughs> and then you get Vajradhara. And then, you know, you're sick of it by then, and you think, what are you going to get after Vajradhara? Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to read another text, and there'll be some other. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, to me, Tsongkhapa's view is a bit refreshing that Vajradhara and Buddha are made into the same thing. Although to really become a Buddha, you have to only practice. Yes, Tantra. Tantra. And within Tantra, you have to practice yoga highest yoga tantra. So it's also so there you a go. stepping crushing. <laughs> yes. So just as you must be a prasangika, a consequentialist, so you must practice highest yoga tantra. The reason being that you must generate this subtle level of consciousness again. 
So the question is asked, can you achieve Buddhahood through the perfection vehicle? When you say the goal is the same, you said Buddhahood is achieved through, <laughs> you said the goal, right, is, is of the perfection vehicle is Buddhahood. Can you achieve Buddhahood through the perfection vehicle? According to whom? According to... Well, Songba's view. Songba's view. The Songba's system. But the answer they usually say is yes, but not only through. <laughs> I cut it. You got to cut it somewhere. But they don't want to say this disgusting thing of you can't achieve it through it. So they say you can, but it's not only through it. Parchin Kyangbe Luke Sangya Minuba. But you have to recognize these stark, seemingly parochialisms in order then to investigate uh, this issue of the fundamental innate mind of clear life. When you look at it this starkly, that with no other system except prasangika can you achieve it, even liberation from secular existence. And then with, it's only with highest yoga tantra that you can achieve enlightenment. Well then, is there any reason for saying that other than that's our system? And they claim there is a reason. And it has something to do with this subtle level of consciousness. And, and that itself becomes an interesting object of study. Not that it, not that it cancels out uh, the parochialism or whatever it is of saying you can't do it any other way. Right? I mean, it might cancel it out if you, if you did it. So, uh, as I remember, Longchenpa says there is a difference between the Buddhahood of Sutra and of Tantra. I'm not quite sure about that. I read that in my own... <laughs> <laughs> in the song of a piece that was assigned for today. Uh, Daksan Lothar, the famous Sankhya scholar, says there's a difference between the two. Um, Jayan Sheva says, because Jayan Sheva was around 1700, um, the Buddha, who, Buddha in sutra is described as not having any winds, prana then this has to be the same as the Buddha of highest yoga tantra. I'm confused. And, um, yeah. Tsongkhapa on one hand is saying that Buddhahood could not, <coughs> could not be attained except through highest yoga tantra. Then on the other hand, he's acknowledging that Buddhahood could be attained through sutra. Yes, it can be attained through sutra, but not attained only through sutra. <laughs> But on the other hand, you can only be attained through highest yoga tantra. Through adding, you have to add highest yoga tantra to the sutra practice. You can start with sutra and then. Oh, I see what he's doing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. But you can't do the highest yoga tantra without the sutra. Isn't that right? Right, you cannot. But you can early on switch over. But the whole foundation of highest yoga tantra is method and wisdom. Right. Method is this out-trusting and to become enlightened, best explanation of which is in sutra. The wisdom, best explanation is in sutra. But very early on, one could switch. Switch from? Sutra to tantra. Right, but you can't do the tantra without the sutra. Isn't that what our charts Yeah, I mean, tantra without sutra, That's a very complex question. Like in this lifetime or over the course of lifetimes, people who can achieve Buddhahood in one lifetime are people who have a lot of good karma from the past, right? But that doesn't mean they've reached the path of accumulation or preparation in the past. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It doesn't mean that. Because then you'd have to say you're not achieving Buddhahood in one lifetime. So, anyway, let's finish. So, 
according to Tsongkhapa anyway, there's no difference in yana as the goal. So then it has to be in the path. Within the path, the difference must lie either in <laughs> method, wisdom and method, or as it says here, method and wisdom. <laughs> Since you do it backwards, what about wisdom? Um, should be the same. Mm, that's what he says. Wisdom is the same, even as in the low vehicle. Even if in the highest yoga tantra there are special levels of consciousness that realize emptiness, the emptiness that's being realized is the same. And from that point of view, wisdom is said to be the same. From that point of view. So they take the word view, tawa. And look at it two ways. Dawa as object and view as object and view as subject. View as object is the same. The object is emptiness. Whoop. Now it is unusual to take the word view and have it refer to what is viewed. But anyway, from the point of view of the emptiness realized, there's no difference between Sutra and Tantra, or Hinayana and Mahayana. Therefore, wisdom is the, makes the conclusion of wisdom being the same, despite whatever differences there are in highest yoga Tantra with respect to the level of consciousness that realizes that emptiness. Now what about method? Yes. What's, what are the two prime divisions of method? Fruit and uh, no, motivation and the deeds induced by that motivation. Motivation and the deeds induced by the motivation. Now, what about the motivation? Is that the same in in tantra as in the perfection vehicle? Yes or no? Yes. Perfection vehicle means great vehicle. What about the deeds induced by the wisdom? In the perfection great vehicle, what are the deeds induced by the altruistic motivation? The perfection. Yes, the six perfections. Or at least, at, I mean, it gets a little weird when you get a perfection of wisdom in there, but usually all six are thrown in this. In Tantra, do you practice the six perfections? Yes. 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 So with respect to the deeds, Sorry, the motivation and the deeds induced by the motivation, he wants to point out there is no difference. Then, where do you find the difference? <laughs> so you see, he boils it down to, he wants to go through a no, 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 it's not this, these are all the same, these are all the same, these are all the same, because he wants to show the integrated nature of the, of the vehicles. What is different is deity yoga, which he puts in the class of method because it's the appearance, altruistic appearance, of the wisdom consciousness in form. So it's like a, not even in the main level of method is there a difference. It's in a sort of additional practice of method that Tantra comes to be different. The main divisions of method are the motivation and the deeds induced by it. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they don't differ. Perfection vehicle and tantra don't differ. So when does this branch? I mean, if we want to. In, in, in terms of charting it, you don't chart it. <laughs> you don't. It's, you don't draw another a line off of here. He just says, well, what tantra has is an additional method. But couldn't you actually? I mean, non-traditionally draw it off with deeds in the sense that it's the way the deeds are induced by motivation. In other words, the deeds... Makes are... some sense to me. And it's also how, how you... I mean, because one of the things you're doing in your yoga is... Combine. You know, combine the two and practicing co compassionate deeds. So it's not just that, you know, I hand you a 20 
in actual, you know, happy to do it, but no, it's the it's the imagining of the yes. I'm not getting a good eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's it. So for next time, <laughs> what should we do next time? We need to redo this material. Let's read Tantra in Tibet, uh, 1 to 150. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. one, 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 one. One, one to 150. One Did you get to ask your question that you started to ask a half hour ago? No. <laughs> I think I figured out that my question was, is it whoever was leading the middle way school or whoever was following, was it those people who said that everyone in the schools below them didn't understand the difference between the aggregates and the, or that there was, there could be separate aggregates and I, I knew it at the time. Yes, they, uh, Nagarjuna, who's like the chief of the middle way school people and thus also a consequence school, says that all of these others are saying, well, the aggregates have one level of emptiness and the person have another level of emptiness. Sorry. I didn't quite say it right. They had already shut down. <laughs> That's what I was asking. They say that the aggregates have a status that the person doesn't have. The people in the three lower schools are saying? Yeah. Okay. The aggregates have a status that the person doesn't that the person has a subtle selflessness, and but the aggregates do ultimately exist. Okay. Whereas Nagarjuna says, none of them ultimately exist. And did he also say that it was in the lower, like it was in the text of a lesser vehicle? Yes, like that text. was contained yes, there, and the that people follow it didn't see that? No. Oh, yes, his type of emptiness is in their source quotes from Buddha. Okay. Is in their source text, but they didn't yeah. know. Right. Okay. Do the aggregates, though, uh, exist only as uh, an objective phenomena? I'm not. Or do they have any kind of consciousness of their own? Well, one of the aggregates is consciousness. Okay, so consequences of like. So consciousness itself is an aggregate. <laughs> Do you want us to get somewhere in contract techniques? Or, I mean, a distinction or just read that whole section that you suggested? Yeah, 150 pages is enough. <laughs> Each of the series. Who are probably later?